a very, very strong pairing. I kind of feel like I need to do a time call and back announce that with the fantastic music we've had. Greg Murphy underneath Loving some it. of those. Are great. Yeah, 20 after 10 now here at Sandown International Raceway. Elton John there. I'm still standing. Good stuff. <laughs> Thank you, Rusty. Frustrated DJ. Let's focus on Super 2 because we're about to go armor all qualifying. And Jack LeBrock and Macaulay Jones, one of seven drivers in this class, along with Todd Hazelwood, that are on double duty this weekend. They will be taking part in the Wilson Security Sandown 500. Some important co-driver duties. And there are others like Josh Keane, Kurt Kostecki, Will Brown, who might be eyeing up co-driver opportunities for this event and the Enduros in 2018. This is the feeder category, the support category, one of the final steps on the ladder on the path to the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. The departures board, Murph, for this round of Super 2 is at Sandown. Yeah, so much history here at Sandown, 3.1 Ks. Of interesting circuit, a couple of big drag strips, 265 k's down the back of the straight. We've seen so much action down there so far during the Wilson Security Sandown 500 weekend down at 2, 3 and 4. Plenty of cars going off the road down there, very slippery, difficult surface changes around this track. Uh, a lot of the surface has been around for a long, long time and has uh, seen better days. So the grip level changes a lot. Uh, the, the surface everywhere it is, is just a patchwork quilt. Very difficult to handle and manage and get a setup for, but the weather has also played a massive part. So 13 corners, the kink there at the end, not much of a corner, but difficult still to get the traction. We've seen plenty of cars in the wet just sideways out of turn 12 through 13. And uh, these uh, young men and women, uh, have struggled, well not women actually, Renee Gracie isn't here this weekend unfortunately, so these guys struggled yesterday to get some decent laps, weather was intermittent and very wet at times and uh, they spent a lot of time off the road, some dark patches on the grass where cars have just dug up trenches all the way through, so they will be looking forward to getting some dry running on some fresh new Dunlop hard control tyres around Soundown, but there's still some wet spots and here's one, look how difficult, out the gate trying to get some temperature in the tyres. The water is going across the road there at the exit of Turn 1. So you come out, down through Turn 1, plenty of heat in the tyre, then go through a wet patch that cools them down. Then you've got to get on the brakes, as we can see. There's the shot there, some spray still coming off the tyres of the cars. So that needs to be taken into account, and that will make a bit of a difference. The track is dry massively. And there we are, down to Dandenong Road corner, down to um, the part of the circuit, fast across oh, the top. Oh, Mason Barbera. Straight away. So tricky, trying to just scrub the greenness off these tyres. Now, this, what's happened is he stalled this. Because he's not stuck, but not moving. So, are you able to get it out or not? Confusion there. Former U racer who joined the Gary Rogers Motorsport squad this year. He won't want to cause a red flag because that will mean that's the end of his session and he will be at the back, but... Red just flag. Fire it up. Oh, there you go. So it's over before it began for Mason Barbera and Anton Di Pasquale has uh, gone past the lane, so the red flag is out. He'll want to save these tyres, although he will be and manage to probably generate a little bit more heat in them for when uh, the session restarts. So something interesting's going on here. I don't think it's as simple as what it looked, potentially. Just while the officials go to work there at Danny Nong Road Corner. Story so far, we had two 40-minute sessions of practice on Friday. The morning session is probably the one we could go to from a form guide point of view. Let's watch the replay, Rusty. See, on the opening lap, it's very cold down there. Still water on the road. And he... And he was... That sounds maybe, quite loud, yeah. Maybe he has had a throttle issue because he was going way too fast for the opening lap, the warm-up. Um, you know, out the gate on a brand new tyre with no temperature in it. Came over the hill, you know, looking like he was on a flyer. So there, it looks like there's a problem. And as I say, he's not stuck, so he would have driven out if he could have. So we'll get a bit of an update, I'm sure, from Rihanna in the lane shortly. Drive for session one yesterday. Gary Jacobson, reigning champion, went fastest with a 1 minute 10.02. Session two, he was also quickest, but the times were well shy of that because it was... Uh, wet and many drivers in fact uh, like Jack Perkins like Paul Dumbrell decided to park the cars quite early on uh, Perhaps knowing what we'd be confronted with radar wise weather wise today. Well, it was also a risk thing wasn't it? Yep. I mean they're, they're driving around in those conditions uh, PD out of all of them probably leads leads the least amount and we just go in car or not in car but
for that thing has been driven on. So it is, it is driving uh, like a, th a stuck throttle, potentially something going on there that uh, forced him to end up where he is. And then he's bailed from it because he obviously doesn't believe he's able to drive that car out of there. That's a bit of a hoodoo part of the track for him. He had a big crash in a, in a ute approaching the Dandenong Road corner many years ago. And he said it took him a little while to get his head around it yesterday during practice uh, in a supercar because they're so much faster. With us for the coverage, as always, in the lane, Rihanna Crean. Good morning to you. Yeah, good morning, Rusty. Have, have had a quick chat to the guys at uh, Gary Rogers Motorsport. They don't believe there has been an issue with the car for Mason Barbera, but he hasn't said much on the radio. But at this, from their point of view, uh, yeah, no issue with the actual car itself. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Inside the Gary Rogers team there, okay. main game cars for the 500. You can see Garth, and they run two okay, cars. Mate, once you get going again, you'll have to come into the pits and park up in your bay. They run two cars in this class as well. Massive build for them over summer. Uh, no, they've confirmed that over race control as well. Right, very disappointing for Mason. But we'll get the session back on. So he is driving the car back somewhat. Yeah, OK. We need to actually have a chat to him to work out what's going on there because I would have thought he would have been able to drive out of that situation quite easily, being that uh, he hadn't dug big trenches into the gravel trap. He was 16th in session one, 11th in session two yesterday. But that's a bit of an odd one. Yeah, those conditions were, were tricky. And, and I, as I said, I think Paul Dumbrell just he called it early. He was leading the session by a country mile when he decided to step out of the car and really wasn't going to benefit too much more from doing anything. So I was a little surprised as many guys continued to, to do as much as they were. But then again, any time in a supercar, uh, especially in, in circumstances like we had yesterday, is, is a good benefit for a lot of these drivers. And many of them saw it, saw it as, as an opportunity to continue tuning, continue learning. And, and uh, that was good for a lot of the young guys, especially like Bryce Forward, who, who needs as many miles as he can get. He was the best of the Nissan Altimas yesterday afternoon, Bryce Forward. And just moving in the queue ahead of him there in the Titan Trey Commodore, that's Jack Perkins. Now, he was on the sidelines very early at the last round of the championship for this class, but he's got a brand new... <laughs> oh, it's beneficial to it's some a, early It's bird. a feeding yeah. fest. <laughs> Better watch out for a supercar not coming through there in a minute, though. Greg Mavic. Oh, my God. Here we go. <laughs> right. This, given your point before about uh, the damp patches around the, around the track, we don't want to disrupt the rhythm here. We're going to need to get a bank lap pretty early. Is that is that important? 11 minutes left on the clock. So um, three sets of tyres for the weekend that they get. And uh, some of them cho chose to actually use a set of those in P1 yesterday, thinking that the weather was going to disrupt the rest of the day, which it did. So the likes of Jack Perkins, I uh, was talking to him this morning, he rode a set early on, practice one, before the rain came down. And he was hoping that was going to be beneficial because of the conditions out there, looking at the track drying, but still with these wet, damp place spots on a fresh green tyre, trying to get the temperature in it, as we saw in practice four for, VR, uh, for Virgin Sailor Supercars. You know, it was very difficult to get the temperature and get a, a valid lap. So we'll see how that plays out. Only 11 minutes remaining. And important to be at the front of the field as always super 2 so competitive in 2017 anton di pasquale comes off the back of another round win in this championship he was very good at sydney motorsport park for the paul morris motorsport team won at phillip island as well here's our championship leader todd hazelwood car 35 the big mate commodore for matt stone racing he leads the championship by just five points coming into this round. He's having a crack here. And it's not gripped up yet either, so no one's car's gripped up. You can just see the way the car is sort of looks like it's fumbling around over the curbs. It hasn't managed yet as Josh Keane down at Danny Nong Road corner turn nine. And he will want to keep this thing going. Got nice. us. And he has managed to. Just take it easy now, Josh. You've got the momentum. Don't want to dig a hole. Someone, Mate, else, someone else has gone off under yellow flag circumstances. I think that's Morecambe, is it? So keen. No Double yellows being there. waved. Right at the top of the hill, you can see them being waved up there. So every lap, this lap, anyone that's on one, there's Anton Di Pasquale. That lap will be ruined for everybody having to just to back off to control the speed. 
Hazelwood again on board as he comes onto the front straight to start another lap. Struggling to get the power down to the big mate Commodore over the curbs. It was Jake Kostecki, oh, I couldn't Kostecki. tell. So he is going to cause a red flag. He's not coming out of that one. So we're going to limit qualifying again. He's still trying, but it's going. Oh. He's been very ginger on the throw, doesn't it? No. This is going to go on for a while, actually, Rusty, I think. Anton Di Pasquale, he was fastest in the first and second sector, but he's given what's happening here and the yellow flag being waved at the end of Danny Nong Road. He's car off in the runoff at turn nine, red flag. Red flag, so that's the end of Jake Kostecki's qualifying session. He may actually get this removed, but it's just taken so long. Just being very careful on the throttle. Look at that. It's on a slick tyre in a gravel pit to keep it moving. He's going to touch that tyre, which is going to stop his progress, unfortunately. But uh, his session over and out. At the moment, Macaulay Jones is the first one to set a representative time. A 1.12.3. Nine minutes on the clock. The clock has stopped at this stage. Bit of a replay. Josh Keane. Just travelling way too fast for the amount of grip that the Winds Falcon had. And this was kind of the question I was posing to you before about being able to stitch a lap and together. The fans at the back yeah. there willing him on. <laughs> well, it, it is, mate, and you, you, you need to... Obviously, you need to be in a bit of a hurry to try and get one because of these circumstances, and then on the other hand, you've got to make sure you don't put yourself in a position like this. Here he is, on board. See how early the brake lockup lights came up on that dash for Josh Keane. He carried a lot of speed over the curves there through the complex down the hill over turn six, turn seven. He was carrying a lot of speed. And that's textbook from the Greg Murphy Rally Driver School. That's right. <laughs> There's a few things I do a little bit differently. So the clock frozen, red flag out, nine minutes remaining in this session as we take a look at some of the oh, incidents. That's Anton Deeper Squire. Now remember, yellow right flags side. have been waving there, and that explains why his third sector was not so flash. After, <laughs> flash at all. Yeah, after two strong first sectors, the fastest we've seen at that point in qualifying. Rihanna? Mason Barbera. Unfortunately, these catch ups are continuing but for for the wrong reasons just talk us through what happened on that opening lap yeah it's unfortunate you know um i was following meerkat my teammate and you know there's a bit of a puddle through through that area there and he got a little bit locked up and i got a little bit locked up but obviously i ran out of a bit of talent and uh went straight in the sand pit and couldn't get out it's unfortunate but we got a good car so we just have to race from the back we just want to know meerkat what's the story behind meerkat oh muscat meerkat nickname you know everyone gets a nickname in grm so that's his yeah, got, got a, bit, a little bit of work to do this afternoon, but see what you can do. Yeah, thanks, eh? Thanks. Okay, so it was uh, just a mistake from his point of view. So I'm a little perplexed, though, why he didn't try to drive that car out of the, the gravel. So as you can see, he was, he was sitting nicely on top there and should have been able to just continue on. So that's a, yeah, a bit of a weird one for us, but he was travelling a bit too quick for an opening lap on a, on a cold tyre. Another learning curve there for Mason as Jake Kostecki's car is extracted and as you can see he will take no further action in this qualifying session so him and Mason Mabira will be off the back of the grid and may still yet be joined by some more potentially. Championships in an interesting phase too because we have two races here this weekend. The last round of the series at Sydney Motorsport Park was jam-packed. We had four races. The first of the four was on Friday afternoon. So two races here. Qualifying session now for Armour or Pole. We'll have 22 laps coming your way this afternoon. We reset and do the same thing again tomorrow. They'll go, of course, to the mountain for a mini enduro. 250 k's up there, Murph, with a lot of pride in that. Uh, it was a great race up there last year. Good strategy by the likes of Paul Morris Motorsport, for example. But it's an on-point scoring round this year. And, of course, it'll all wrap up. We will find out who the Dunlop Super 2 champion is for 2017 at a brand-new event, the Coates Hire Newcastle 500. We cannot wait for that. That'll be huge. Puts everybody on a bit more of a level playing field too, Rusty. No one's been there before, so track information, experience is at a zero for everybody in the field.
And there's a man with lots of experience. 88 on the left of your screen there a moment ago. Paul Dumbrell. Bryce Fullwood, very good yesterday afternoon. The youngster from Darwin. Macaulay Jones, currently fastest with the clock frozen in this qualifying session. A 1 minute 12 3 2. Is he about to grab an armor or pole position in the pace Commodore? We go once again. Can we get a rhythm? Can we get a flow and get some excitement in this qualifying session? The red flags have disrupted things, but it's tough going for them. Jack Perkins looking to get some clean air straight away. He wants to be at the front of this field. Not have anyone ahead of him. Be the first one to start a lap. Hopefully be able to complete one. Some shiny Dunlop stickers on the sides of those tyres. And based on the speed that he is travelling at the moment, they've obviously got a little bit of temperature in them that he was generating before that red flag came out. And at the moment, he's sitting way, way, way down the field without a, a time, really, that's representative of his speed. He's in 19th, so keen to get this happening and lay one down before potentially we see some more red flags. Kurt Kostecki. He's behind. The track is just continuously drying. Look at it. It's changed a lot since the start of the session. Although that river there, just where Andrew Jones has crossed, would be a bit of a mental challenge as you come over the hill and see the water on the road, run through it, and then jump on the brake pedal to slow it down. Where Josh Keane's going through. And also turning things around for the likes of Josh Keane, knowing that he's been off the road there already, that's a mental challenge to get through to, to uh, not let it get in the way of a fast lap. So Perkins, lights on, no one ahead at the moment. He's got a clear track, although he is already coming, going to catch potentially some back marker traffic. So far, clean through one, through two, through three. Using the grip up over the curves, turns in nicely for four. Using all the road now. Yesterday in the wet, they were half track coming through there to find some, some drive, some traction out of turn four. Building speed all the way up the back straight. On a good day, 265 odd k's an hour. He's got a new engine in the Dragon Motorsport car, which he was much happier with yesterday. Over the curbs, through the wet. Runs it pretty narrow, stays off the curb on the outside at the entry to nine. So Very much happier, clean. isn't he, at this, this round? He was a spectator early at Sydney Motorsport Park, out after the first practice session. Keen to get one in the bank here very early. Jack Perkins, will he go to the top of the order? Macaulay Jones currently the fastest. Dragon Motorsport entry does it. We're into the 11s. 1 minute 11.38. Jack Perkins currently the fastest man. Paul Dumbrell eclipses him. He's now top. He's going to have to keep going with this. There's no time, really, as Hazelwood comes to the lane for tyres. This is going to be a challenge for Todd Hazelwood. I'm really not sure that the Matt Stone team were on the ball here, sending him out with only six or seven or eight minutes to go, then bringing him back in to put tyres on to get temperature. They looked like they were greens to me going on the car. So this is going to be tricky for Hazelwood. He's going to have to build temperature nice and slowly without getting in the way of anyone else that's on the road as Perkins continues and we'll hit quickly down to Rihanna who was standing there looking at Hazelwood's tyre change. Yeah Merv, during that red flag period they had green tyres on Todd's car then they quickly changed, put a U set on, he did that uh, for, uh, outlap and then have brought him back in so maybe they just wanted to get uh, reassurance on a setup change before they put him on those green tyres. Yeah I think it's a pretty risky move there Rihanna so we'll see what happens for, for Hazelwood as he tumbles down through the order at the moment back down to 11 and let's hope that's not a strategic error by that team as he comes out now here's Dumbrell crosses the line he goes faster 10-1 oh, Jacobson's off he's done that is over and out it's buried the Sorry. mega fuels car he apologizes to the team this will bring another red flag as Dumbrell has just laid down the gauntlet at 10-1 and Will Brown slots into second this is going to hurt Hazelwood Rusty Big time. Dumbrell currently the fastest man from his teammate Will Brown. Andrew Jones recovering from a difficult practice too. Yesterday is third. That's Andrew Jones up ahead here. See on the replay what I'm Dumbrell goes through. Jacobson very wide. Has to go to the grass. Man, is he lucky that didn't make contact with something a lot more solid. Wow. He was committed over the hill, just traveling too hard, too fast. 
remember you approached there. What is it, 265? Oh, 265. I remember what happened yesterday in the wet, albeit, for Fabian Coulthard. He ended up. Oh, the back of that car just wasn't stuck to the road. Man, did he bow. He would have definitely thought he was going to the Armco there for a period of time. Once the back stepped out and those tyres touched the grass, he was nothing more than a passenger. How's the heart rate that? Sometimes it works out, although he will be at the back with those other guys <laughs> for the start of this race. His championship is even now more out of the window than what it already was. It's been a really tough title defence for Gary Jacobson. He'll partner up with Jason Bright for the 500 tomorrow in the Mega Fuels Falcon for Pro Drive, but he'll have to start the Super 2 race today from the rear of the grid. Jack Perkins currently sixth. Clock frozen again with five minutes remaining. Shame for this guy. I mean, massively disappointing for Gary. Puts uh, a lot of pressure on himself and the clock because of the limited time we have is started again. So it's ticking just under five minutes now. Todd Hazelwood back in 11th. Hasn't managed to put down anywhere near the time required. And I just uh, wonder if he is going to get going again. It's going to take another little bit of time to get Jacobson out of that gravel, gravel trap. And then Hazelwood's just got to keep it cool, not panic. But there's going to be only a small amount of time left and not a lot of temperature in those Dunlop hard tyres. Hoping that we'll get this underway. Just over four minutes to go. Is Dumbrell looking at another pole position and that could be pivotal in the title race this year. He's second on the points ladder, just five behind Todd Hazelwood, who's currently provisionally qualified 11th if we don't get this done again. The recovery team's doing a brilliant bit of work to extract this car pretty quickly. Three minutes 45 remaining on the clock. He'll fire this up and they will, uh, I'm pretty certain we're going to see a bit more action yet. Not from the number one, though. The Mega Fuels Falcon will spend the rest of the session in the lane, and his time will be taken away from him. Rihanna. Yeah, Murph, I just had a quick chat to uh, Matt Stone in regards to that decision for Todd Hazelwood and why they made that decision. They said that they are really wanting to use the, uh, this very last part of this session to get the best use of those green tyres. Huge risk, though, as we've seen with that red flag. That's exactly what they didn't want. Uh, you can see Todd Hazelwood sitting there in pit lane at the moment. That's why they went to that U set of tyres to really uh, maximise that the very end of this session. But when they saw the red flag, they, they sort of went out the window. So a uh, huge amount of pressure on Todd Hazelwood. We know he's leading this championship at the moment, but by hardly any points. He really needs to maximise this dying minutes of this qualifying session. I don't know if they're going to get a that done. Was the risk. That uh, was, I mean, see, that's the risk that I don't, I wouldn't be taking in these circumstances. So, I, you know, I hear what they're saying, but, you know, um, you've got to lay down a time and you've got to do it as quickly as you possibly can and taking a risk and, and hoping that there isn't going to be a red flag, which clearly there has been, and there's been three so far this session. Um, you know, I, I think they made a bit of a mistake with that, if you ask me. But anyway, um, I'm hoping we're going to go green. Jacobson makes his way back in. So, uh, two minutes and 18 remaining on the clock. This is pressure cooker stuff. Hazelwood, he may only get one lap, Rusty. I don't think he's going to... No, he won't. He won't get round in time to be able to, uh, to do two. So he's got one lap. He's going to have to get temperature in these tyres. I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Go, this is either going to be win or bin in that sense because an electric... One lap dash for the championship leader. Will he now that the, the numbers get reset with Jacobson losing that time? Work the tyres yep. there, Todd. Work them hard. He's 10th at the moment. And he's got traffic. He's got traffic as well to deal with. You want to give yourself some room. Look at him up front and too. And make a decision really quick if you're going to try and pass these guys. So he's going to go past here. That's uh, Jack Smith, I think. But now you do not want to get stuck. 
where you're going to be compromised. And there is a gaggle of cars. So now he's going to back Smith up a little bit. He's got Eagles to Motorsport. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Jordan Boyce. Jordan, Jordan Boyce. On the outlap after the flag. Just keep it cool. There's a Richard Musket. Where's he currently in the list? He is a long way out as well, is he? He's down in 15th yeah, place. Yeah, no. So there is That's another story. everywhere. He went, Jordan Boyce went around the outside of Richard Musket. Down the back straight, travelling way too fast, clearly. Oh. And, man, making his debut in the category. That was uh, some uh, driving that uh, you would have thought made him look like he'd been here for a long time. So, well done to recover it. The lock-up into one oh, line. Will Brown. Will Brown. Dumbrell's out. He's done. Hazelwood, has he got the speed? Two, three. The car doesn't look like it's got enough grip in it to me. Clips the curb, runs it wide. Up against the berm almost on the curb at the exit of four. Personal best in the first sector for Hazelwood. Yeah, what does it compare? 26-7 to a 26-6, which Anton Dees Pasquale has the best of the session. So it's a very good first sector. On the limiter in six gear for a mile. Carries the speed. Nicely done. Under brakes. Keep it cool. No lights showing on the dash. Gets to the apex beautifully, does Hazelwood. He's making close. ground on Will Brown ahead of him. Last couple of corners. Brown's car Loads looked it like, it looked like a dance coming into Danny Nong Road. Looking good. He'll get a little bit of a toe off Brown. This is it, the chance. Flag is out. Where does Hazelwood go? He goes P2. Great recovery by Todd Hazelwood. Wow. Matt Stone with the sunglasses and beard there. You can see Todd's mum in the background, but he rescues, he salvages a second what in the a dying recovery. moments. Good job. Perkins Will goes fourth. fourth. Anton Di Pasquale third. So Richard Musket gets to eighth as well in that frantic. Andrew Jones, who's had a shocker of a weekend so far. We've seen him at the back of the timesheets. He puts it sixth. LeBrock now goes to fifth. Perkins sixth. Andrew Jones seventh. Macaulay Jones eighth. But Paul Dumbrell, who bailed from that lap, chose not to compete in that last run, and he has got another pole position. Just a great run. So Hazelwood, well, he recovered well. He kept his cool. 0 0.07 of a second, too. What a great last lap on tyres that really were still coming up to temperature, Rusty. Eggleston Motorsport and Paul Dumbrell take pole position. The Armour All pole check is going the way of the two-time champion who is very much in the fight for the 2017 crown. He trails Todd Hazelwood by just five points coming into this one, but he gets the best possible starting position in Super 2 for what is effectively, in points terms, the penultimate round of the season.